When the Buddha teaches breath meditation, he sets it out in 16 steps. But you don't follow the steps from 1 to 16. He divides the steps into four sets of four, called tetrads. And each tetrad deals with a different aspect of what you're going to do as you get the mind to settle down with the breath. The first tetrad deals with the body, the second with feelings of pleasure, pain, neither pleasure nor pain. The third deals with the mind, and the fourth deals with mental qualities. These are the things you're trying to bring together as you get the mind to get together with the breath. And the steps give you some ideas of what to do, and also where to look for solutions to problems as they come up. First, he tells you simply to be aware of the breath coming in and going out, and then focusing on the body, noticing when the breath is long or short. And then try to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in, breathe out. And notice the effect of the breath on the whole body. Some ways of breathing are energizing, others are relaxing. So you might ask, what does your body need right now? Does it need a little extra energy? Okay, breathe in long, out short. If you had enough of that kind of breathing for a while, then let things calm down. That's a pattern in each of the tetrads. You get sensitive to what you're doing, the process that the Buddha calls fabrication, how you shape your experience right now. You energize it, and then you try to calm it down. Now, if you're having trouble staying with the breath, maybe the problem isn't the breath so much itself. After all, it's coming in, going out. Maybe it's with the feelings in the body. Maybe there are pains that are distracting you. Well, the Buddha says, focus on the feelings you can create with the breath, particularly comfortable feelings. Feelings of ease and pleasure, feelings of rapture or refreshment. What way of breathing would feel pleasant right now? Focus on the aspect of the breathing that induces that sense of pleasure. As for the pains, you can let them be in some other part of the body. You focus in the area where you can create the pleasure with the breath. As for rapture, that's defined so many different ways in the commentaries. It's not defined at all in the canon. And John Lee defines it as a sense of fullness. You can do a little fullness experiment while you're breathing. Try to keep your hands as relaxed as possible. If there's any tension or tightness anywhere in the hands, just let it dissolve. And after all, there'll be a sense that the blood fills the hand. It's not being squeezed out. And then try to let that sense of fullness go up the arms. And you can try the same with the feet, and let that sense of fullness develop in the feet. Relax all the muscles in the feet. And then think of that sense of fullness moving up the legs, up the torso. As you breathe in, breathe out. Sometimes you notice that as you breathe out, you tend to squeeze things in some part of the body, maybe in the hands or the feet. This time you resist that temptation to squeeze. If the breath is going to go out, you don't have to squeeze it out. It'll go out on its own. The only effort you may have to make is bringing it in. But let the out-breath be as effortless as possible. Now, sometimes a sense of fullness gets to be too much. And this is where you move to the next step, is getting sensitive to how these feelings have an impact on the mind. And when you realize it's too much, then you try to breathe in and out in a way that calms them down. In particular, if you can focus on some subtle sensations in the body. Don't focus on the 
intense sensations of movement in the body, more subtle sensations are what you want to focus on. And that can get you past the sense that there's pressure in the body. Or can ask yourself, if there's a sense of pressure, what's pushing it against what? Think of the whole body being composed of atoms, and the atoms are mainly space. And there's no little membrane around the atoms, and there's no membrane. Even your skin is not a solid, solid membrane. It's got lots of gaps. All the different organs in the body have lots of little gaps in between the atoms. So wherever there's a sense of pressure, think of it not having anything to push against. It can diffuse out through those spaces. This is where you see the role of perception in adjusting your feelings, and also its impact on the mind. Because that's the third tetrad, is dealing with the mind. Sometimes the problem is not the feelings in the body, it's just that the mind is either overexcited, is too active thinking about things, or too sluggish. If it's too sluggish, or depressed, or discouraged, what can you do to gladden it? What can you do to put yourself in a good mood? As John Sweat always used to say at the beginning of each meditation, come to the meditation with a sense of conviction, come with a sense of inspiration. That this is really good work you're doing here. Be happy that you're meditating. If, however, the mind is already too worked up, we can do what you can to calm things down. What will calm the mind down right now? Sometimes it's simply the way you breathe. Other times you have to actually think through the issues that are disturbing you. Just to the extent of realizing they're not worth thinking about right now. You don't have to solve all your problems in life before you get the mind to settle down. If you tried that, you'd never get to meditate at all. What you need simply is to realize you don't need to be thinking about those things right now. Whatever the problems that are facing you in the future, they're uncertain enough that you can't really plan that much in detail what you're going to do. But you do know that. When something unexpected comes up, you're going to need mindfulness, you're going to need alertness, you're going to need your powers of discernment. That's what you're developing as you meditate. So by meditating, you're not avoiding your future problems, you're actually giving yourself the skills you're going to need to deal with them. That way, whatever's weighing the, bar, <coughs> weighing the mind down, you can release it from it. So these first three tetrads are basically dealing with all the component factors of getting the mind together with the breath. Because what you want is a sense of the breath filling the body, a sense of a comfortable feeling filling the body as much as possible, and your awareness filling the body. That's where all this is headed. You're trying to bring them all together right here, and what you need to do is see where are they not fitting? Where is one thing getting in the way of something else? And that's for the fourth tetrad. The Buddhist description is that you focus on inconstancy, then dispassion, cessation, and then relinquishment. And for the time being, the only inconstancy you want to focus on is the inconstancy of the things you're thinking about that are not related to the breath. If some problem is eating away at you right now, Ask yourself about problems that were eating away at the mind last year. Where are they now? They're all gone. And if you actually were able to keep a record of your worries versus the actual things that happened, you'd realize you worried much more than the actual events. And the events that really knocked you off course were the ones that you hadn't even thought about beforehand. All this is to get a sense of dispassion for those thoughts, because it's your passion for your thinking and your interest in what the mind is going to churn up next that keeps you feeding on these things. And, and as you feed on them, you feed them.
It's like the chickens from hell. You give them chicken feed in the morning, then they come and they peck at you at night. So when you get a dis sense of dispassion for this process, that's when it can stop. And you begin to realize that all these things that you've been feeding on are things you've been creating yourself. And the problems that you've been feeding on, you've been creating yourself. And that's when you give them up. And, then, and they cease. So that fourth tetrad, especially in the beginning of the meditation, is to help you fend off the things that have got you distracted. It's right there. It's a further explanation of that step where you're supposed to release the mind. This is how you do it. You develop this passion. That's the release. And that's a lesson you're going to be learning all the way through the meditation. As the mind moves from one level of concentration gets more solidly established. You find that which a lot of the extra activity you're doing to help protect it, you can drop. In the beginning, as a John Fung used to say, it's like pouring cement. You need the mold for the cement in order for the cement not to just flow away. But once the cement, once the cement is hardened enough, then you take the mold away. And the cement's not going to go anywhere. So while you're thinking and adjusting and evaluating, after a while you realize you've got things pretty good. The mind is here, filling the body. The breath is filling the body. The sense of ease is filling the body. And all you have to do is maintain it. You fend it off the things that would get in the way. So in this case, you're releasing yourself from a grosser level of meditation, a grosser level of concentration, and getting into a more refined one. So what the Buddha is doing with these four tetrads is, is giving you a framework for looking at what you're doing while you're sitting right here, trying to get the mind to settle down. And instead of thinking of them as 16 steps, like the steps in a stairway, they're like tools that are arrayed in your tool shed. And you pick up the tool that you need. You don't have to pick up all 16, and you don't have to pick them up in any particular order. You just assess what's going wrong, and then you've got the tool to deal with it. Then you put the tool down. In other words, you don't have to think about the steps. As the mind begins to gather together, all you have to do is think about being right here. And then just maintain what you've got. Don't be in too great a hurry to move on to the next step. Learn to appreciate a mind that's able to settle down. We've got these three things together, the breath filling the body, Comfort filling the body, ease filling the body, and then your awareness filling the body. You're going to learn a lot of lessons about the mind as you try to maintain this state. So you don't even have to think about insight so much. The insights will come as you do the work. It's like really getting to know a piece of music. Play it, you get the notes down, you work the notes. Then you memorize it, you don't have to worry about the notes on the paper anymore. And then you really listen to yourself. And as you listen to yourself play, you hear a lot of things you didn't hear before. That's what insight is like. You notice things about the mind you didn't notice before. And working at the breath is the ideal task. to pursue so you can actually see the mind in action. So once you get the mind right here, just stay right here. Mindful, alert, ardent. And the things you need to know to 
unburden the mind will reveal themselves. As you keep at this one task, 